uh, we are at uh, Computex, and who are you? Uh, my name is John Mao, and I am from Calzada, responsible for product marketing. So uh, here you have. Uh, uh, she close the camera. Oh, so what is this? This is what we call the energy card. Um, it's a reference card that we're using to help OEMs get to market faster. Um, on this card, there are actually four separate SOCs. Uh, these SOCs are each quad-core Cortex A9s. Um, they're fully functional Linux servers. They run Ubuntu uh, 12.04. We have some demos here actually with um, web servers running, uh, different types of uh, languages supported on there as well as some cloud infrastructure technology from OpenStack. So why do you design it like that? Uh, this is just a way to demonstrate the fact that we are a true single chip server. Um, everything that you would need on uh, in a true enterprise data center class server um, can be built with just one chip alone. And what that affords you is that tight integration that allows density of this, of this magnitude. So, this is just one of those, and what, what is on the back? Is micro right, SD as well? Yeah, on the back of this, we actually have a built-in SD flash controller inside of our SOCs, um, and that enables, mostly, this is an example of being able to do things like booting from a micro SD card, or debugging, or making it a log, log device as well. So, you would uh, have each area like this somehow? Yeah, so each one of these, um, by themselves is paired, each SOC is paired with a memory slot as well as some SATA connectors. Um, that alone forms a complete server. So do you put like a 3 terabyte, 3 terabyte, 3 terabyte? Yep. How does it work? Yep, you can connect any type of SATA, um, SATA device to this as you normally would in the server. Um, this gives us some flexibility. So we envision in the future there may be variations of energy cards and our OEM partners may build their own energy cards as well. In servers, do people just put the largest capacity hard disk or they put smaller hard disks that are faster? Or how do yeah, they usually it, it, do? It depends on the application. So some applications that, that demand a random <laughs> seek, they may even go with a smaller capacity SSD. Um, there are other larger applications that require a lot more storage. They may end up using you know, multiple spinning three and a half inch, you know, uh, two terabyte drives uh, instead. So it really so depends on the application. You're showing something here? Yeah, so we're, what we're showing here is just the demonstration that this card is fully networked together with our 10 gigabit fabric. So there's cable free connections between not only this card, but if you look in the chassis over here, we actually have the ability, we actually have the ability to plug in all of these cards into a system board on the bottom of the chassis of the system board. And what this allows is now through our fabric switch inside of the SOC, all of those cards and all of these SOCs are fully integrated in the network via 10 gigabit Ethernet. So is this a uh, mock-up or is it... This particular one is a mock-up because we've implemented just a clear plexiglass. The real server that's hooked up to the demo is running underneath the table. It's the exact same chassis. You can actually see it running right there. This is running. This is a run, it's a running server. It's plugged into just a consumer grade gigabit switch over there. It's hooked up to the back of the chassis. It's connected to uh, technically a laptop up here for, for being able to browse and issue command line right. interfaces and so forth. So, so it's actually like fully real? Fully functioning, fully real. Fully, we since have, when? Since um, we've had silicon for. Uh, I don't remember the exact date, but for, for some time now. So we've done lots of validation, um, and we're about to be shipping to our customers, our OEM partners, uh, by the end of this month for their validation, integration into their own chassis as well. So how many of these are being made um, and sold well, and used? Um, I, I don't know the exact quantity, but it's it's enough to fill multiple racks and to supply, to supply a lot of their demands for their end-user data center customers as well. So. Calzida makes um, ARM processors. That's correct. And what else? We make we make just the SOC. Um, and the SOC has, um, like I mentioned, all of the ARM cores built in, but it also has a dedicated fabric switch built into the chip, and also a what we call an energy core management engine. So it's fully integrated, and that is our core technology. We built these cards as a means to kind of simplify um, the initial POC systems for our OEMs to get some early feedback from large data center customers. So what are you showing in here on the screen? So, so what we have is actually a demo where um, we have a live card, live version of this running inside of our chassis. And what we've done is on our first node, we've gone ahead and taken our corporate website, our calzada.com website, 
and I copy and pasted it completely over <coughs> onto this live system here. And the benefit of this, while it's a simple demo, the benefit of this is it shows that there's all of these software dependencies and packages for servers, or for web servers, are already available. And in fact, the performance is quite good as well. So if you look here, this is just our standard website. There's no, um, there's no differences here. There's no code changes. That's a big question we get. Is, is there any software porting or changes required? There's absolutely zero change to any of the code running uh, on this website. The other demo we have is, um, we have on the second note here, we have running another web server. This is running WordPress, a very popular PHP-based content management system. And then we have another, another database server running over here on this other node. And the reason why we want to show this demo is that this illustrates that there is full network connectivity between these two nodes. And they're working in harmony to build this particular, this particular website example here as well. Uh, the reason why we show this is that the second most often asked question is, what kind of software change is required to take advantage of our fabric, of our interconnects? And the answer is nothing. In fact, we install default packages from Ubuntu, available for both the database and the web servers. We loaded the software as is from the internet, and it fully works. And the last note over here, we actually have deployed uh, something very popular. It's becoming a very popular um, uh, cloud framework called OpenStack. And on it, you can see we actually have two different uh, web servers running. So to illustrate additional web languages that we support, both Ruby on Rails, a very popular web framework, and Node.js, which is an emerging software technology that takes JavaScript and puts that on the server side uh, to make it easier to develop Web 2.0 types of applications. So the functionality here is also just to demonstrate that the ecosystem is quite broad for ARM-based processors, and especially leveraging some of the some of the proprietary you know um, functionality and features inside the SOC of the Calzada Energy Core SOC enables both extreme density for these types of target applications. So, so could you explain a little bit more how you designed this uh, processor? Uh, for example, there's no GPU, right? Right, there's no GPU. So um, our, our design, our focus was specifically on the server market. So if you look at some of the SOCs from other vendors that are targeting the mobile markets, they have integrated GPUs for you know, touch screen, the UIs, and so forth. But in the server market, we don't, we don't need that user interface. We don't need the VGA graphics. So we've taken that out and instead replaced it with things like better memory bandwidth, more I.O., like our network switch, and even some management capabilities in place of it. So how does, what does it mean, mem better memory bandwidth? Like, uh, how better? So we support DDR3 up to 1333 with 72-bit uh, data paths, so there's full ECC support as well in our memory. And those are kinds of features you wouldn't find on a mobile-based processor. So is that, uh, like, can you say 10 gigabit? How many gigabytes per second, gigabit per second? Um, that... I, I have to do the math. I don't remember the exact, but you, you can do the math. Based but on much that. more than what the normal Cortex C9 would do? Yes, more, 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 both because of the data path, but also because of the speed, the frequency of the memory, the DDR speed. So what else did you remove from, uh, let's say, a tablet or smartphone SOC? What did you add? What did we add instead? Yeah. Well, like I said, we, we added the, uh, the network I.O., so we have an integrated fabric switch. You can think of that as a five-port layer two switch, and that enables some topologies like this that give, give both redundancy and high bandwidth across the entire cluster. Right? So I don't know if I made this clear, but this is a four-server cluster and about a 10-inch card. Right? Four completely separate Linux operating systems working in conjunction, so this could be a complete web cluster, or it could be a distributed web server, database server, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So when I run my uh, PHP BB forum or my WordPress uh, PHP mm -hmm. script, uh, it's cool to have it load super fast. Yes. yes. Is that something you're going to support? And yes. uh, would you need to combine more than one of these? To yes do the optimal speed stuff? It's a good question. Um, we'll be releasing benchmarks pretty soon that will show just the performance characteristics of each SOC. Um, we will need, if you have a lot of aggregates, so if your, your readership is very high, you have a lot of users and you worry about aggregate throughput, then you may want to pair it with multiple, uh, multiple SOCs. Just like in x86, once you reach a certain threshold, you'll need to add another server into your, into your data center. Exactly the same way as the x86, or is it, uh, yeah, for example, uh, there's some services that provide VPS, what's it called, uh -huh. hosting 
or dedicated hosting. Yeah. How do you compare with that? It's, it, it, those, those are all the software layer above operating systems, so those would be all fully supported, right? Once we're in the, we're in, uh, the, the mainline distributions for both Ubuntu and now Fedora as well, they would act and feel just like you would any of your, your hosted machines today. So can you basically guarantee that web page load times, even for very popular websites, if they were hosted on ARM, would be as fast as anything else? Or? There's a lot of uh, variables into performance, right? So you know, performance will be very, very sufficient for a lot of, lot of web applications, um, a lot of large websites today. Um, a lot of the largest internet companies are interested in this technology as well. And if, um, you know, if you need more throughput, then the way you do that even today in x86 world is you load balance across multiple machines, right? So you can think of this as four different servers that provide load balanced um, web serving for your website. But can you, can you combine as many as you want and have as fast serve? Yeah, we the biggest websites in the world, they could in theory just be hosted on that and nothing uh, else? Yeah, absolutely. So we, we support up to 4,000 SOCs in a single cluster today using our fabric. Um, there's no reason why you couldn't extend that by using Ethernet to connect additional clusters together. So you can build very, very large web clusters just using our fabric technology without having to use any additional network switching technology at all. So 4,000 quad cores? 4,000 quad cores. Is that enough for your website? For one website? For If you want to. If you wanted to. For Engadget or The sure. Verge and for New York Times, if they want to host on your thing, it's uh, on sure. your system, you it's, can host, you it's can host totally going to work. As long as they're written in any of the languages that we support, which is almost everything. Everything on the web <laughs> is PHP. PHP, or, MySQL stuff. That's right. So and that's, there's no there's delays no changes, in clicks or anything. No, there's, no, there's no differences in the software at all, right? So the code is fully supported today. But when people click, it's going to load as fast. It, that, that's a yeah, that's a function on how the, the, the infrastructure is configured and set up, right? So um, we we obviously don't provide a you know for example a hardware load balancer, but that's something that they need better performance for a large cluster, and that's something they can use, right? So uh, not to try to ask a trick question or anything, <laughs> but uh, do you think or do you know or can you say or Facebook, Google, Amazon, uh, HostGator, mm -hmm. DreamHost, all these huge server yeah. uh, rack space, what, yeah. what are they thinking about this? Do you think they're totally trying it out? You know, I think they all have the same problem they're facing today, which is um, a power problem, right? In their data centers today, they have um, a fixed amount of electricity that can come into the data center. And so they're faced with this challenge of being able to maximize that electricity and the power coming in. Um, and, and as they bring on more customers and more users onto their website or into their data centers, they want to add more performance in that same power envelope. This is one way they can achieve that, right? They can add a lot more processing power in the same power envelope as an x86-based data center today. So, for example, just to give you some relative comparisons, each SOC here will run about 5 watts of energy. Compare that to some of the Intel-based servers, you're talking over 100 watts uh, when you start adding in all the chipsets and the I.O. chips um, to create that server. An, an Intel server is 100 watt per server? Uh, but it varies depending on the model of the CPU, but you have to remember that it's not just the CPU, it's also the, the I.O., the South Bridge, North Bridge chipsets if required. It's also the BMC if they have one of those inside of the server as well. When you add up all of that, that's the same as one chip inside of this particular SOC, which is burning 5 watts. I think I read some comments somewhere that people said, for example, video hosting like YouTube, Mm -hmm. or some other video stuff on the internet might require more processing power than what the initial ARM processors would do. Is that true or not true? Um, it, it depends on the application, um, but I think a lot of the video um, and file serving, so a lot of the, the, uh, the, the kind of like the CDN type of applications where you're streaming files um, from a cloud storage um, um, infrastructure, for example, those should be okay because most of the delay and the latency and the the you know, hardware requirements are going to come from, this, from the storage subsystem and not from the CPU itself. So we're not looking to transcode video on the fly. That will require a lot of hardware. That's going to be Intel. That's separate. Yeah, for that's a separate. while. For yeah, a while, and right? maybe even other technologies besides yeah. Intel. But yeah, we wouldn't, we wouldn't be doing anything like that on the fly. That, that we wouldn't be well suited for that. GPUs could take GPUs, care of, uh, exactly. of video encoding for YouTube that's right. when they convert everything. That's right. But actually hosting But actually and delivering the video to the customers, right, to the end yeah. users, that's, that's perfect. Perfectly well suited for this as well. So you're actually going to enable a 4K YouTube where everybody has a 4K TV at home. It's only going to work hoping, with our... We're, we're hoping we're hoping we could sell even larger than 4K clusters, right? So that's that's our hope. That's what we have today. 
Um, but you know, in the future, we'll, we'll see. We'll, we'll get feedback from these types of customers over the next six months, twelve months, and we'll uh, we'll build out and refine our roadmap and our partner designs with them together. Because YouTube is completely insane. It's like a gigantic, it's huge, gigantic system. It's right. like. I don't know how many times uh, the 101 building it is full of data centers just right. to just to deliver they, all that video yeah. to everybody in the world. Yeah, and they have they have a lot of um, they have different types of workloads, like you said. They have some that are transcoding videos for mobile devices, right? So when you're viewing your mobile device, you don't have an HD quality as you do on your laptop and so forth. So there's different types of applications even within companies like YouTube. Um, and, and we may be better suited for certain classes of applications than others, but we think there's an opportunity there for us. So when you hear what some of the Intel representatives say, is they say there's lots of PowerPoints, but there's no actual... Well, is it not true? No, that's not, not true. Because like I said, we have real hardware. It's working today. We were just showing you a live demo on our first silicon parts. And, the, and the, there fact, was noise in the beginning of the video because there was actually servers, our servers, servers running yeah. in the room. And in fact, there's a server next to us. There was an announcement recently by MyTech for introducing their own servers as well, based off of another ARM product. So you know, ARM servers are coming. They're real. Um, I think anybody that thinks otherwise will will see the realization in, in, a, in a little bit. How hard is it to actually ship millions of these? To ship millions you just need somebody to put money in the, and buy it. If anybody wants to buy a million of these, we will build it and ship it to you. There's no, no problem in making them. <laughs> yeah, we, we are a fabulous company, right? So it's just a function of, of being able to uh, work out the supply chain with our vendors and partners. There's no bugs, leakage, or delays, or... We've actually found no no bugs today, um, but you know we're continuing to do our testing and validation going forward. So what's the next Calzada version is going to do? You don't want to talk about it yet. We can't we can't disclose that yet, but you can, what could it be? You could assume that we're going to follow the ARM roadmap into as far as the 64-bit Atlas. Um, architecture as well. So we're excited about the opportunity and we look forward to what we can do with ARM in the future. How big is Calzada? Um, how well is it going with the company? The company is going very well. We're growing extremely fast. So if anybody wants to interview for a job, you should hit up our website and check us out at calzada.com. How many people are you? We're over 75 employees at the moment and we're growing at a very, very fast rate. It's only two years. Or, yeah, only been around for a couple of years. Yeah. So growing very, very fast. In Austin? In Austin, Texas. Very beautiful city. <laughs> no, you know, can I spend around the world? We are going to be looking to open branch offices um, very soon. Um, possibly in Taiwan to support some ODMs and OEMs in the future, but um, we're, still, we're still working through those plans. But that would be a logical place to start for us. And you have a bunch of uh, what's called uh, members or what's called uh, investors that are public, right? Yes, absolutely. We, if you look on our website, we have investors. In fact, ARM. Arm Holdings themselves is our largest investor, so they're using us as a vehicle to kind of get into the server market. And we have a whole bunch of premier uh, venture capitalists. Yeah, Battery Ventures, Flybridge, uh, Highland Capital. Those are all. Uh, those are all. Uh, ATIC. Those are all different um, VCs that invested in us. We've, we've, um, yeah, no, no, other, no other comments besides what's what I just mentioned. But you know, those are um, those are the the main public VCs for our first round.